This video will demonstrate how to use Solver in Microsoft Excel to set up a linear program to determine the optimal solution to a component manufacturing problem. Here's the data for our problem. Volmer Manufacturing makes three components for sale to refrigeration companies. The components are processed on two machines, a shaper and a grinder. The times in minutes required on each machine are as shown. The shaper is available for 120 hours and the grinder for 110 hours. No more than 120 units of Component 3 can be sold, but up to 1,000 units of Component 1 and up to 600 units of Component 2 can be sold. In fact, the company already has orders for 600 units of Component 1 that must be satisfied. The selling price per unit and per unit variable costs for each of the three components are shown. The data has been collected in a Microsoft Excel file, so download the spreadsheet and complete the following requirements. Requirement A. For each component, Calculate the profit margin, where profit margin equals the selling price minus material cost minus labor cost, and then formulate and solve the model to determine the maximum profit. Requirement B. What are the objective coefficient ranges for the three components, and interpret these ranges for company management? Requirement C. What are the right-hand side ranges, and interpret these ranges for company management? Requirement D. If more time could be made available on the grinder, how much would it be worth? Explain. And requirement E, if more units of Component 3 could be sold by reducing the sales price by $4, should the company reduce the price? Let's open up our downloaded Excel data file and complete those requirements. The worksheet's already set up with our component selling prices, material costs, and labor costs, along with the production requirements and constraints for each component. Let's start with requirement A and determine the profit margin for each component in cells E4 through E6. For component 1, click on cell E4, type the equal sign, then select the selling price of $25 in cell B4, followed by the minus sign. Then select the material cost in cell C4, followed by another minus sign. Then select the labor cost in cell D4. Press enter or return, and the profit margin for component 1 is $8. I'll shade that cell green then copy it down by double-clicking the fill handle in the lower right corner to autofill the formula down to cell E6. The results are profit margins of $6 for component 2 and $9 for component 3. Now we can construct our linear programming model. We have three components, so let C1, C2, and C3 equal the number of units of components 1, 2, and 3 manufactured respectively. The company is in business to make profits, so our objective function is to maximize 8C1 plus 6C2 plus 9C3, with each of those being the profit margins of each component. Our model is also subject to a number of constraints relating to our machines, demand, and orders. Our first constraint relates to the shaper machine time. Components 1, 2, and 3 each use 6 minutes, 4 minutes, and 4 minutes of shaper time respectively and only 120 hours or 7,200 minutes of shaper time is available. We can express this as 6C1 plus 4C2 plus 4C3 must be less than or equal to 7,200. For the grinder, each component requires 4 minutes, 5 minutes, and 2 minutes respectively, and only 110 hours or 6,600 minutes of grinder time is available. We can express this as 4C1 plus 5C2 plus 2C3 must be less than or equal to 6,600. Next is the demand limit on component 3, where no more than 120 units can be sold. So we can express this constraint as C3 must be less than or equal to 120. Next, we're told that up to 1,000 units of component 1 can be sold, so we can express that constraint as C1 is less than or equal to 1,000. We're also told that up to 600 units of component 2 can be sold, so we can express that constraint as C2 is less than or equal to 600. We also have a minimum production requirement of component 1, since orders for 600 units already exist and must be satisfied. We can express this constraint as C1 must be greater than or equal to 600. Finally, we'll also include our generic non-negativity constraints to ensure no solution with a negative quantity is generated. We can express that as C1, C2, C3 must be greater or equal to 0. Now I'll set up my workspace. I'll enter the title Component 1 
and enter 1, 2, and 3 in cells A19 through A22. I'll enter to produce as a heading in cell B19 and shade the output cells B20 through B23 blue. These will be the cells where Excel will enter the results of our model when we run it. I'll enter shaper and grinder into cells B and C25 and minutes used in cell A26. I'll shade cells B and C26 blue. Now we need to create a formula that determines how many minutes are used for each machine based on whatever the production of each component is. For the shaper, click cell B26 and type the equal sign. The total time that will be used must be the sum of the total production time to produce all three components. We'll use the sum product function for this. So start typing sum product, and when you see it in the list, select it or press the tab key. For array one, select the output cell range B20 through B22 and press F4 to lock that range. Then type a comma, and for array two, select the range B11 through B13, which contains the production times for each component. This is easier than creating a longer formula that multiplies B20 by B11, B21 by B12, and B22 by B13, and then summing them up. Press enter or return, and the answer will be zero. And that's fine because we have not run the model yet. Copy the formula in cell B26 over to C26. It should be zero as well. Now I'll type profit in cell A28 and create a formula in cell B28 using the sum product function again. This time for array one, select the range D11 through D13, which contains the profit of each component. The model was set up to link those values from our earlier calculations in the green area above. Type a comma, and for array two, select the production output range B20 through B22, press enter or return, and again, the result is zero because we have not run our model yet. I'll shade the cell green. Now for the fun part. Select the data menu from the menu bar and in the analysis group, click solver. If you don't see it, then you don't have it installed. And you can do that by clicking the file menu from the menu bar, then clicking options, then click add-ins and make sure you see Excel add-ins. If not, click the drop down arrow and select it. Then press go and check the box next to solver add-in and click OK. Then select the data menu from the menu bar again, and you should see the solver add-in in the analyze group. Once you've clicked the solver button, the solver parameters box should appear, and this is where we will duplicate the model we initially set up. Click in the set objective box. This is where we want to indicate what our objective function is, and that's the profit formula we created in cell B28. So select that cell from the worksheet. Now we want to maximize profit, so make sure the button next to max is activated. The default for solver is usually max. Now click in the box under by changing variable cells. This is where we will specify the blue production output range cells B20 through B22. Now for the constraints. Click the add button. Our first constraint is for the production limits. Click on the cell reference box, then select the production output range B20 through B22 and make sure the less than or equal to operator is selected in the middle of the box. Then click on the constraint box and select the production limits of 1,600 and 120 units for each component specified in the cell range F11 through F12. Click the add button. The next constraint will be for the minimum production amounts. In the cell reference box, enter the output range B20 through B22 again, and this time make the operator greater than or equal to then click on the constraint box and select the minimum production amount specified in cells E11 through E13. Press add. The next constraint will be for the machine time. Click on the cell reference box and select the cells we created to calculate the total time used to produce the components in cells B26 through C26. Select the less than or equal to, then click on the constraint box and select the cell range B15 through C15 which contains the time available on each machine. Click Add. Now click Cancel. Don't worry, this won't cancel the work we did. It will just close the constraint box. Here's where we can see our constraints, and it's always a good idea to double check before proceeding. Next, make sure the box next to Make Unconstrained Variables Non-Negative is checked. And for the solving method, make sure Simplex LP is selected. Now click Solve. 
a new box appears, and you should be able to see the solution that Excel has generated. In my model, Excel recommends producing 720 units of component 1, 600 units of component 2, and 120 units of component 3. This production mix takes 7200 minutes of the shaper machine and 6120 minutes of the grinder. We can see that the shaper machine is fully utilized while the grinder is not. The total profit for this product mix is $10,440. Now you want to make sure the Keep Solver button is selected. And for Reports, select Sensitivity, then Limits, and click OK. Excel creates new worksheet tabs for those reports, and I'll copy some of the key results to this worksheet in cells A30 through D42 so we can do some of the other work we need. First, we'll look at the gross profit variables. I've added column headings for lower limit and upper limit in cells H32 and I33. We'll start with the calculation for component 1. Click on cell H34, type the equal sign. The lower limit is equal to objective coefficient less the allowable decrease value. So click on cell E34, type the minus sign, and select the allowable decrease in cell G34. Press enter and the result should be zero. The lower limit tells us how low the gross profit could be on a component to result in a different optimal solution. For example, here's a screenshot of the solution after I change the gross profit to one cent. Notice the production for the three components hasn't changed. But if I change the gross profit for component 1 to 0 and run solver again, now the solution changes and only 600 units of component 1 are produced. We could make zero profit on component 1 and still have production because there's an order that must be satisfied regardless of how much profit the product generates. Now I'll copy that formula in cell H34 down to H35 and H36 using the fill handle and then reduce the number of decimal places to 2. This tells us the gross profit for both components 2 and 3 won't change until the gross profit drops to 5.33. Here's a screenshot of the results after I set component 1 back to a gross profit of $8 and component 2 to $5.34. Notice we're back to the original solution. But if I change the gross profit of component 2 to $5.33, the production amounts change and now we have a new optimal solution. Now for the upper limit. This is the objective coefficient plus the allowable decrease. Click on cell I34, type the equal sign, select cell E34 followed by the plus sign, then select the allowable increase of 1 in cell F34 and press enter. For component 1, the upper limit is 9, which means the original solution will not change until the gross profit of component 1 hits $9. Here's proof. I set component 2 back to $6 and changed component 1 gross profit to $8.99 and the original optimal solution remains. But once I change it to $9, a new optimal solution is generated. For components 2 and 3, there is no limit to the gross profit. You can make those as high as you want, and the optimal solution actually won't change. Don't believe me? Here's a screenshot of the result when I reset components 1 and 2 to the original $8 and $6 gross profits and changed component 3 to $100,000. The result is the same. I'll format these upper and lower limit cell screen. Now for the constraints report. I'll add the same lower and upper limit headings in cells H41 through I42. These are for the machines, and we can use this to determine how much capacity we can add or take away. For the shaper lower limit, click on cell H41, type the equal sign. Select the RH side constraint in cell E41 followed by a minus sign. Then select the allowable decrease in cell G41. Press enter, then copy that formula down to H42 for the grinder. The results are 6,480 for the shaper and 6,120 for the grinder, meaning we could lower the constraints on the machines to those amounts and still have the same solution. Here's proof. After resetting the gross profits back to their original values and then changing the grinder constraint to 6,120, there's no change in the solution. But once I change the grinder constraint to 6,119 minutes, the production values change and the emphasis shifts towards producing more of component 1 and less of component 2. You're encouraged to play around with different values to see what you end up with. For the upper limit, click on cell I41, type the equal sign, and select the right-hand constraint in E41 again, followed this time by a plus sign, then click the allowable increase in cell F41. Press enter and the result is 7920. 
This means we could increase the machine constraint up to 7,920 minutes to still have the same production emphasis. Once the upper limit is exceeded, emphasis will shift to produce more of component 1 and less of component 2. For the grinder, there's no point in calculating the upper limit because the allowable increase is essentially unlimited in cell F42. We could increase the capacity of the grinder by as much as we wanted and the optimal solution won't change. This is because the shaper machine is actually the critical constraint. I'll shape those answer cells in green as well, and now we're finished and we can proceed with summarizing the answers to all of our requirements. Requirement A asked us to calculate the gross profit of each component, which was $8, $6, and $9 for components 1, 2, and 3 respectively. We set up a linear program with the model, resulting in production volumes of 720 units, 600 units, and 120 units for components 1, 2, and 3 respectively, resulting in a maximum profit of $10,440. For requirement B, the objective coefficient range for component 1 is between 0 and 9, and a low of $5.33 with no upper limit for components 2 and 3. This means that individual changes in profit coefficients within these ranges will not cause a change in the optimal number of components to produce. For requirement C, the right-hand side range for the shaper is between 6,480 minutes and 7,920 minutes, and for the grinder, between 6,120 minutes and infinity. These are the ranges over which the shadow price for the associated constraints are applicable. For requirement D, if more time could be made available on the grinder, how much would it be worth? It would actually be worth nothing because the constraint related to the time available on the grinder is not binding. And what we saw is that the shaper is the machine that was fully utilized while the grinder was not. Adding more capacity to an already underutilized machine wouldn't make any sense. For requirement E, if more units of component 3 could be sold by reducing the sales price by $4, should the company reduce the price? And the answer to that is no, because the production of component three would be less profitable than the production of the other two components. And at the reduced price, none of component three would be produced. The current gross profit of component three is $9. And a $4 reduction in selling price would reduce the gross profit to $5, which is below the lower limit of the objective coefficient range of $5.33. You can prove this by changing the gross profit in the model from $9 to $5 and running the model again.